When it comes to making Alpha UEC fast and easy, there are few game loops within Star Citizen that can hold a torch to salvage. Whether going it alone or running with a crew, this recently updated game mechanic will not only fill your digital wallet, but can also take you all about Stanton at the same time. Citizens, my name's Beard of Oz and this is my beginner's guide to salvage. As such, I'll be focusing the information contained within to the smallest salvage vessel, the Drake Vulture. The vast majority of what you learn here today will also apply to the Aegis Reclaimer and likely any newer salvage vessels that make their way into the verse in the months and years to come. Even if you aren't new to Star Citizen or salvage in general, I hope you'll find something useful in this video. With that in mind, I'll have timestamps below so that you can jump to any part of the video that interests you. Alright, let's dive in. I'm going to take a very quick moment to cover the bare necessity basics of the Drake Vulture, so that for the rest of this video you won't need to wonder. The Drake Vulture is a single crew salvage vessel now available to purchase in-game. It's available from New Deal in Lawville on the industrial dystopia that is Hurston. You can pick this vessel up for the reasonable price of 1.2 million Alpha UEC, and at the time of recording this sadly could not be rented. It can hold 12 SCU of cargo on the grid and for the purposes of stuffing this vessel with as much salvage material as possible, can also hold roughly an additional 10 SCU along the designated walkway next to the cargo grid. The Drake Vulture has a bed, a gun locker and a suit locker, though the suit lockers don't currently function but hopefully soon TM. There's more I could tell you about the Drake Vulture but I don't want to spend too much time in the weeds on it, but what I will focus on is the scraper heads. As a default, the Vulture will come out of the box with a pair of cinch scrapers and a single abrade scraper paired with a tractor beam. Ultimately, this will all come down to personal preference of how you scrape, but I'll break down the differences here so that you can judge for yourself. There are currently three scraper head variants to choose from. The cinch is a smaller diameter tight beam with a high transfer rate. This means it will strip the hull under its area of effect faster, but that area of effect is quite small. The next is the abrade. This has a wider diameter than the cinch and a slightly lower transfer rate. Personally, this is my preferred scraper head as it feels like the sweet spot. The last is the trawler. Primarily intended for the reclaimer, this is also usable on the vulture. The trawler has a very wide diameter of effect though a noticeably slower transfer rate. It is particularly useful on the hulls of much larger vessels. The tractor beam is for the convenience of moving objects about in space, though currently you can only have the one, and I've yet to see it available for purchase in game to have a pair of tractor beams. If you're like me and dislike asymmetry, you might just want to switch it out to complete a pair of scrapers. The scraper heads can be purchased at Platinum Bays and Dumper Depots about the verse. So, what is salvage? Salvage is essentially collecting valuable materials from derelict vessels with the primary purpose of selling said materials for profit. As the profession is expanded upon, that will likely become one particular avenue, but as it stands without major crafting mechanics in-game, it's all about the money. With recent additions to salvage, there are now a few more steps involved to maximizing your profit, and I'll go over these in more detail. These steps are essentially hull scraping, structural salvage, component and weapon salvage, and lastly, cargo salvage, though not necessarily in that particular order. We might as well go over the major one first, as currently this is the primary moneymaker. Hull scraping is essentially removing the outside coating of a ship's hull through the magic of beam technology, and converting it into a sellable commodity called Recycled Material Composite, or RMC for short. In order to scrape the hull of a ship, its shield must be down. Does this mean you can scrape the hull of a working ship that doesn't have its shields on? Yes. Yes it does. Do with that what you will. The method by which you scrape the hulls of ships is a relatively easy one, not requiring as much skill or precision as something like mining, and has been likened to such games as Power Wash Simulator. When positioned in front of the ship you are going to scrape, pressing the M key will activate the salvage mode and extend the scraper heads. Ensure that the salvager is in scraping mode, denoted by these markers on your HUD. Now the Vulture comes default with cinch scraper heads as a pair and an abrade paired with the tractor beam, so unless you've changed them out, that's what you'll be working with. Once these heads are extended, pressing your left mouse button will activate the beams and begin scraping. These circles here will show you the amount of hull that is beneath that particular beam, so that when you've scraped all that there is on that spot, you can move on. A lot of salvages will go by the visual state of the hull itself as once the hull has been stripped away, you'll be able to see the exposed latticework of the ship's structure beneath. 
Some useful functions of note here are, firstly, activating gimbling with the G key will allow you to sweep the scraper beams without needing to move the whole ship. Another is holding the left alt key and scrolling the mouse wheel to shift the beams along the horizontal axis, moving the areas of effect away or toward their center, allowing you to cover a bit more space or focus the two beams together depending on your preference. Pressing your alternate fire, the right mouse button will switch the baler heads to your alternate configuration. If you didn't change it beforehand, this will be the tractor beam scraper combo. As you scrape, you will fill the internal storage, which in the Vulture is 13 SCU, but more on that later. When the internal storage is full, your beams will scrape the ship's hull, but the RMC will not be collected. Next up is Structural Salvage. This mechanic is relatively new, having been released to the PU in Alpha 3.22. As such, we might see some additions or amendments to the way this feature operates, so if the information contained within is inaccurate and it's been a little while, that might be why. So, structural salvage is the breaking down of the rest of the ship into what is currently classed as construction materials. It is suspected that at some point in the future this is likely to be expanded into specific materials for the purposes of crafting, but as it stands, it's just this one sellable commodity. To enter into structural salvage mode with salvage mode active, Pressing the left Alt and W keys will switch from scraping to structural salvage. Within this mode, there are two sub-modes. The first, shown here, is the primary, intended to break a ship down into smaller, manageable parts. For the Vulture, this can only be done to smaller ships, with the Crusader MSR being the largest. Getting within range of the ship, pressing left mouse button will activate the process and this loading will begin to fill. If you do not see this, you may need to get closer. Once the ship has been broken down into its primary segments, you'll need to switch to the secondary mode, Disintegration. This is achieved by selecting Alternate Fire, the right mouse button. When in this mode, segments within the Disintegration arc will be outlined in blue and a percentage marker will be present, a negative number informing you of how much material you'll lose in the process due to being too far away. Moving closer to the sweet spot will reduce this percentage of loss and in some cases result in a positive. Each piece will have an estimated amount of construction materials to be collected, and on the right hand side of the screen a total amount listed above the filler station amount. If this indicates that you stand to lose too much due to lack of free space, you can process some of the materials into cargo containers, more on that later. Cargo salvage is precisely what it sounds like. Some derelict vessels will have cargo contained within, more often than not of rather low value. However, it costs you nothing but time to scan the ship to assess its cargo just to be sure. With the ship targeted, pressing the V key will switch your ship to scanning mode and keeping the ship within your reticle range and holding down the left mouse button will scan the ship, showing the ship's components and cargo. Now, this feature is at times non-functional and often tedious, so if you're particularly keen on cargo you can enter the derelict and check manually. Lifting a cargo container with a handheld tractor beam will tell you its contents and should the cargo be of value you can remove it from the ship before continuing regular salvage activities. This is particularly important to note as structurally breaking down a ship counts as destroying the vehicle and results in a percentage of any cargo on board being destroyed. It's also worth noting any larger SCU containers such as 16 SCU and above will not properly fit in the Vulture, so having a friend with a larger cargo hauler on hand is never a bad idea. While the processes I'm about to describe are best done before major salvage of the vessel, I've put them last because at the time of recording, very few ships have been given the component parts necessary to remove them. However, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention it here, as this will become a more prevalent and important aspect of salvage as the passes are conducted. When salvaging derelict ships, you can remove weapons and in some cases components to either use or sell. The prices at the time of recording aren't particularly profitable versus the RMC and construction materials, but still, if it's an element of the gameplay you'd like to engage in, you certainly can. When entering a ship, you can unlock the ports to allow you to remove weapons and if applicable, ship components. You can often find this button somewhere on the dash in the cockpit or you can use a bound hotkey. Once you've unlocked the ports, using a handheld tractor beam you'll be able to remove ship components size 2 and below, again for applicable ships, and also their hardpoint weapons and items. Using the tractor beam to grab the weapon in question and pulling it in the direction indicated by the arrow. If the component or weapon corresponds to a hardpoint or slot in your vehicle, you can similarly replace it. But be aware at this point in time reclaiming a ship will do so with components you have purchased and equipped and not those you may have salvaged from other vessels. Alternatively, you can sell them at corresponding shops in Stanton. Now I've previously alluded to speaking further on the filler station and that time has come. 
In the back lower half of the Vulture, we have the processing and cargo area. Descending the ladder in the back of the habitation area, you'll come to the heart of the Vulture's operations. Next to the processor and dispenser, you'll see an interactive display terminal where you can see how much RMC and construction material is currently stored in the filler station awaiting dispensation. Before we get to that, you've already heard me mention handheld tractor beams a couple of times. If you've forgotten to bring one, not to worry. The Vulture currently has the ability to craft the Greycat handheld multi-tool and several key attachments. Select the crafting tab here to see what the cost of printing such tools is. When it comes to producing the sellable containers of both the RMC and construction materials, this is completed in much the same manner. Navigate to the Depot tab and select the material you'd like to begin dispensing. The amount of each of the materials available will be displayed at the top here. If you select Auto Eject in the bottom corner here, the dispenser will continue to push containers out so long as the ejection area remains unobstructed. Using the handheld tractor beam and detachable mode, the B key will switch between the two modes with the multi-tool in your hands, you can move the crates from this ejection slot to the cargo grid of the ship. As previously mentioned, the Vulture has a cargo grid of 12 SCU and the walkway can also be stacked with crates. Be careful when stacking the walkways as throwing the crates too haphazardly can cause the Star Citizen jiggle, and many a ship has exploded due to this. This section here is likely to be the most fluid, depending on how long after the release of this video you are watching. As it stands, RMC can be sold at the TDDs in the major landing zones on each of the four planets of Stanton, as well as Grim Hex and the Salvage Yards, though these are going to be at a lower sell price as they are no questions asked terminals intended for the selling of stolen and other illegal commodities. As of 322, the RMC will sell at the TDDs for just over 14,000 credits per SCU. The construction materials sell for less and need to be sold at administration offices such as the ones planet side and in the orbital stations. Currently, the going rate for construction materials is 6,000 per SCU, though the demand for this resource is far lower and the supply from salvages is increasing. These prices and locations may be tweaked as time goes by, so it never hurts to check at a trade terminal when you happen across one to see what commodities they will buy. Now when it comes to salvage, there are a couple of ways you can go about this. You can take bounty missions and salvage the ships you've defeated, either alone or with other players. Combat assist beacons are also a decent source of candidates as well. Alternatively, if you'd rather stick with non-combative methods, you can take salvage missions. These can be found in the general tab and have a reputation of sorts attached, though currently this reputation isn't displayed anywhere. These missions in the early stages will have you pay a fee and allocate you a legal salvage vessel that you'll need to salvage to complete. Previously, this would mean that you'd have to scrape it to completion in order to finish the mission and increase this reputation, but with the addition of structural salvage you can skip the slow method and just jump straight to breaking it down, completing the mission and allowing you to advance to higher value targets. Reaching a higher, still invisible tier will unlock the risky salvage missions. These are found in your personal tab and once upon a time were overburdened with glorious illegal commodities, becoming something of a cash grab. Lately they've seen some rebalancing and aren't quite so laden, but as with all things in Star Citizen, this may change again in the future. Another method of salvage is to find these clusters of panels floating amongst asteroid patches, whether that be at Lagrange points or amongst Yella's asteroid belt or the massive Aaron Halo. In the early days of 322 being live, these clusters are bugged and don't properly exist, but I'll go over how to find them and hopefully by the time you're watching this they'll be fixed in the game once more. When in these asteroid locations, sending out a radar ping with the tab key will bounce back these pockets of debris with a distance marker. Switching to the scanning mode with the V key hovering your reticle over these signals will bounce back a reading. Any number that is divisible by 2000 is a cluster of panels. There are a few different panel models and it's these big curved panels that are the best. They will provide about 7.5 SCU of RMC with the smaller panels providing less, though that makes them no less valuable. There are other ways to find salvage such as the missions mentioned in this video here. I'll put the link to that video in the description below. And that completes my beginner's guide to salvage in the Vulture. If you enjoyed the video or learned something new, I'd appreciate you hitting the like button to let me know. If there's anything you think I missed, let me know in the comments section below. And if you'd like to learn about the cargo profession, check out this video here. Stay safe in the verse citizens, and I'll catch you all next time.